So this video will go over all of the vocabulary words that you need to know for the parallel lines and the, the congruent angles and supplementary angles. All of these vocabulary words can be very confusing at times and let's go over some of them now. This is the transversal. The transversal cuts the parallel lines too. Parallel lines and it forms eight angles eight angles. The parallel lines, as you know, the two parallel lines right here, and they will never meet. Let's get down to the angles. Vertical angles. Vertical angles are A and D, B and C, E and H, F and G. Vertical, if you, if you realized A and D are vertical, and B and C are vertical, just think of this as like, you know, cut in half as this is being the upper half and this is being the lower half. Vertical angles are only in each half. So like A to D, you realize that's in the upper half. C to B, they're vertical in the upper half. E to H, vertical in the lower half. And F to G, vertical in that lower half. So just remember... When you're talking about C and F, these are not vertical angles. That's what a lot of uh, students do tend to do as far as um, making a mistake, saying that C and F are vertical and D and E. They're not. Remember, this is the upper half. This is the lower half. So let's go over it again. Vertical angles A and D, B and C right across from each other, E and H, and F and G. I'm going to skip corresponding just for a minute. Alternate interior. Remember, this looks like a sandwich to me because I'm obsessed with food. So this is the this is like a slice of bread. This is a slice of bread, and this is a toothpick that goes right through it. So when you're talking about the inside of a sandwich, you're talking about interior angles. You're talking about this part right here: C, D, E, and F. Interior, outside, exterior: A and B, G and H. So inside, where the meat is, and outside the bread a b g h so alternate interiors across from each other on the inside c and f and d and e so alternate interior angles c and f and d and e alternate exterior again outside and across from each other a and h and b and g so a and h and b and g so to go over alternate interior, only on the inside, C and F and E and D. And on the outside, alternate exterior, A and H and B and G. To go back to corresponding and um, uh, exactly what I said before, think of this part as the upper half and think of this part as the lower half. And the best way I could explain it is that when you have corresponding angles in in triangles that are similar, right? Say you have corresponding uh, triangles that are similar. When you when you uh, say that this angle right here and this angle right here, they are corresponding angles. They're corresponding angles because they're in the same location. So this is the top, and this goes to the top. This is the bottom left, that goes to the bottom left. These are corresponding angles. And this is the bottom right, and that goes to the bottom right. So when you're talking about corresponding, you're talking about the same location. You're talking about the same location. So the same goes is true for when you have parallel lines. Um, so I'm going to circle one angle. And you're talking about A. If you circle A, what... what angle corresponds to this one in the bottom. So you're talking about A in the upper left and E in the upper left. Sorry about that. Here we go. Alright. And so A and E are corresponding because A is in the upper left and so is E in the upper left. When you're talking about the upper left of the up, upper part and the upper left of the bottom, they're in the same location. 
FB corresponds with F. Again, in the upper right, and F is in the upper right. C corresponds with G, or 2G, because this is in the lower left-hand portion of the top, and this is the lower left-hand portion of the bottom. D corresponds with H, because this is in the lower right-hand side, and this is in the lower right-hand side. So let's just take a look at them. You have A and E, B and F, C and G, and D and H. Just one more time, A and E, B and F, same location, C and G, and D and H. Just to go through them again, the vertical angles, A and D, C and B, E and H, G and F. The corresponding in the same location, A and E, B and F, C and G, and D and H. And notice they're on the same side of the transversal, never crosses. Alternate interior only on the inside, C and F, D and E. Almost looks like vertical, but they're not because this is part of the upper, this is part of the lower. So, talking about only inside angles, C and F and D and E. Alternate exterior on the outside and across from each other. So you have A and H and B and G. Consecutive interior angles are just angles that are consecutive. When you say consecutive, that means in a row, and it, they have to be inside. C and E and D and F are consecutive interior angles. And yes, they're all uh, C and E is equal to 180 degrees. They are supplementary. When you're talking about supplementary angles, you're talking about A plus B, straight line, supplementary angles. Add up to be 180 degrees. C and D, same thing. E and F, G and H. G and E, supplementary, equal 180 degrees. C and A, even angles that are not next to each other, like A and G. This is the obtuse angle. This is the acute. Together, they add up to be 180 degrees. So that's a rundown of all the vocabulary you need to know. And I'll see you next time.